This is a video to show uh, distance time and velocity time graphs and I'd like you to be able to watch them and get information from them and work out what's happening with them. Now on this first one we are looking at um, well just a straight line. It's just a dead straight line and because this is the distance that is showing that the object is at a constant distance away. It is 10 meters away. Never changes. After two seconds 10 meters away. After four seconds 10 meters away. That just isn't moving. It's what we call stationary or at rest 10 meters away. The forces there must be balanced. If something is 10 meters away, it's not moving, there can be no forces, no resultant forces on it. Here's another line, 5 meters away. Again, we would call that stationary or at rest, and the forces must be balanced on that. Here's another similar looking graph. It is once again, we're looking at the distance and we can see here, we've just got one little line along the bottom. And what that's telling us is something is stationary. It's at rest, it's not moving. It's right here, it's zero meters away. Right, still a distance time graph, but we've got a different shape. This is going up and up and up and up. We can see that after two seconds, it's five meters away. After four seconds, it's 10 meters away. So what we're looking at there is, uh, we can work out the speed. It's a constant velocity because it's not changing. Uh, speed, you should know. Speed is distance divided by time, or speed is sometimes known as velocity, but it's distance divided by time. So we can do 10 divided by four, 10 divided by four, which gives us a speed of 2.5 meters per second. The forces must be balanced. It's traveling at a constant velocity. The forward force must be the same as the drag force can only be. Well, here's another one doing the same thing. Speed, distance divided by time. But now the distance away is just five meters in four seconds. So we can say speed, five divided by four, 1.25 meters per second. Forces are balanced just like before. Now, what's going on here? You can see it's a distance time graph and it starts off 10 meters away and after two seconds it has, it's zero meters away. It, it is, what we say there, it's traveling at a constant velocity. It's not changing, traveling the same speed all the time but we can see it's actually coming towards us because it was further away and, and now it's closer. Speed is distance divided by time. So the distance travel is 10, took two seconds, and then you're looking at five meters per second. And we sometimes put a little minus in, just to mean backwards. It's going in the opposite direction to the ones we were looking at before. The minus doesn't really mean it's a negative amount of distance. It just, it just tells us the direction it's traveling. Constant velocity forces must be balanced. And there's something traveling a little bit more slowly. It's done 10 meters in total, but it's taken four, meet, four seconds and therefore it's doing 2.5 meters per second. And again, we say minus, just meaning it's going in the opposite direction. Forces must be balanced because it's a constant velocity. Now, if we look at velocity time graphs, people sometimes get a bit confused because they look the same, but they mean something different. All the time from now on, I'm just going to be looking at velocity. This here is the velocity, it's how fast you're going. Velocity is just like speed, except velocity is a vector, which means it's got a direction as well as a, a size. And we're looking at things here with a velocity of 20. And after five seconds, it's doing 20. And after 10 seconds, it's doing 20. So we're doing a constant velocity. We're doing a constant velocity, uh, we can work out it's 20, 20 meters per second, not changing. And there's something else, it's going a little bit more slowly. Constant velocity, 10 meters per second, and both of them, the forces are balanced. Got to be, because it's a constant velocity. The forwards force must be the same as the backwards force. There is something there, dragging on the bottom there. You can barely see it. That there is a constant velocity. In fact, it's zero meters per second. It is at rest or it's stationary. And that means forces must be balanced. 
Okay, now we're looking at something. Again, we're looking at a velocity graph. This is now sloping upwards. And if it's sloping upwards, something's changing. We can see that after five seconds, it's doing, well, five meters per second or something. After 10 seconds, it's doing 10 meters per second. So what's happening there is it's accelerating. And we can work out a value. We can put a number on that acceleration because you can use this equation here, which is the change in velocity divided by time. Now, acceleration, to put that in sort of uh, mathematical numbers, the change in velocity is v minus u, which is the final velocity, which is 10. Take away the original starting velocity, which is 0. So it's going 10 minus 0. There we go. The acceleration is 10 minus 0 divided by 10, because it took 10 seconds. If you pop that in, work it out, 1 meter per second squared. And that is because it is 1 meter per second per second. So it's meters per second squared. Funny units. Now, as forces are not balanced there. They're definitely not balanced. That's getting faster. And when everything is getting faster, the forces are unbalanced. The forwards force must be bigger than the drag force. There's another one, faster. It's managed to get up to 20 meters per second there in the same amount of time. So we can just work it out. Acceleration, change in velocity divided by time. V minus U divided by time. Again, final, final one. Take away the original one, which is 20. Take away zero, divided by 10. Two meters per second squared. And again, that's accelerating. So the forces cannot be balanced. The forwards force is bigger and the drag force is slower, which makes it go faster and faster. OK, well, this is doing the opposite. We're still on velocity. And this has gone from 20 down to 0, and it's taken 5 seconds. If we use the same values, we can say acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. Pop the numbers in. Now, I just want to watch what happens here, because we've got final velocity, which is actually, uh, the final velocity is actually 0. And the original velocity is u, so that would be 20. So when we pop those in there, we get 0 take away 20 divided by the time, which is 5. And that gives us minus 4. The minus 4, the minus 4 means it's slowing down. It's decelerating. Now, the forces can't be balanced. That's telling us that the friction forces, possibly from the brakes, are making it slow down. Not balanced. Oh, there's another one again. We can see it's slowing down. We can see it's decelerating. We're going to put the numbers in again. Change in velocity divided by time. V minus U divided by time. Um, and, well, the original is 20, just like before. Sorry, the final, the final velocity is 0, just like before. I apologise. And the original is uh, 20, just like before. So it's not take away 20 divided by time, which is 10. That gives us minus 2 meters per second. And again, it's slowing down, it's changing speed, changing velocity, therefore the forces cannot be balanced. The frictional forces must be greater than the force pushing it forward. Now this is something else you can show on a velocity time graph. And again, we're on velocity, uh, but you can actually work out the distance travelled. And the way you work out distance travelled is, well, distance... Let's say, look at between A and B, point A and point B. The distance between those two is given by velocity times time. Well, the velocity is 20 and the time is 5. So put those in, 20 times 5, 100 metres. Between A and B, in this shaded section, they've travelled 100 metres. Well, you can see that uh, between B and C, that's roughly the same size as well. So this is going to be 100 as well. But, but more importantly, we can see that this here is a rectangle. This whole section is rectangular, and the sides of that are 5 and are 20, which gives us the area of a rectangle. So the area is the same as the distance travelled, and that's really, really useful in a moment. I'll, sh I'll show you why that's so useful. Uh, that would be the same. Here we go, we can work out the area of this rectangle. This rectangle would be 5 times 10, that's going to be 50. This one here would also be 10 that way, 
five that way, that would also be the same. So we can work those through, just area of rectangles, distance travelled, on a velocity time graph, on a velocity time graph is, well, it's the area of the rectangle, which is 100 metres. It's really, really useful on this section here because we can see we've got the velocity is changing. The velocity changes. Now that's useful because if we want to work out the distance between O and A, distance is velocity times time, but you can't put a velocity in. What number do you put in? 20? 10? Something in between? 15? 5? I don't, I don't know. You, the velocity is changing. But if we think about the area, it's the area of a triangle. And you know that the area of a triangle is half base times height. So in this case, it's 0 0.5, there's your half, times by the base, which is 10, times by the height, which is 20. Half times base times height gives us an area of uh, 100. So although I didn't know what value of velocity to put in, I could work it out because I just worked out the area. And it's really important to know that if you're on a velocity time graph and you need to work out an area, or sorry, you need to work out a distance, what you need to do is uh, work out the area. If you can work out the area, it doesn't matter what the velocity is or how much it changes. You can even do complicated ones like this. You've got a triangle there, so you can work out the area. You've got a rectangle there, work out the area. And you've got a triangle there, work out the area. So, half times base times height, 5 times 20 is 100, but times a half gives you 50. The area of this triangle is the same, half times base times height. And then the last bit is a rectangle. Well, area of a rectangle is just the base times the height. Gives you 100. 5 times 200. Uh, sorry, yeah, that's 5 times 20 is 100. So you add them all together, the total distance travelled there would be 200 metres.